Welcome back guys and gals. Today's video comes as a request from Ultimate Phoenix to create some Fortnite style particle effects for when the player is walking around, you know, a little bit of kick up dust with each footstep. And I thought it would make a really cool introduction to some basic particles, which I haven't done yet on my channel. So good opportunity. I thought we'd get started. All we're going to need is a, uh, a cloud texture, like a particle texture. I'm using the uh, textured particle cloud from my, uh, from my texture pack, which you can pick up from Gunroad. I'll leave a link in the description below. And that's it. So to get started, let's just right click, make a new material, call it footstep mat, and we'll just open it up. And now the, the basic sort of uh, premise of making materials for particles is that you're going to need a particle color uh, node, which just translates what we have in the material to the, the right kind of thing for use in particles. Pretty easy to get a hang of. And we'll also need to change our material here from opaque to translucent. Pretty easy so far, and we'll drop our texture in as well. So we'll get our uh, particle cloud, just like that. And then we'll come out of here, the main uh, RGB of our particle color will go straight into emissive, and the alpha here will come out into a multiply, and we'll multiply it by our texture. And from here to control how much opacity uh, we're going to use, we'll make another multiply and a scalar. This one we'll call opacity multi, Set it to, let's say three, but we'll use a scalar so that we can instance the material and control it, uh, control it later. And then we'll plug that into the multiply and then the multiply into opacity. And we're done. This is our particle material. So just hit save on that. And we're ready to continue. So back in the, uh, in the editor here, let's just right click back in our content browser and in our basic asset menu here, we see particle system. So just create one of those. We'll call it our footstep, our footstep, PE for particle emitter. And we'll open it up and we get to this uh, interesting screen that we haven't seen yet before. And uh, first off, we'll uh, head up here to required and set our material here to the footstep material that we just made. And straight away, well, once the, once the shaders have compiled, we see our, our particle appear in this, uh, in this window here. It's not quite what we're looking for at the moment. So we'll uh, change some of these uh, some of these emitters over here, make sure that we, we know what we're doing. Let's set our, so click on spawn and we'll set our spawn rate down to three. So we get this uh, more staggered sort of, sort of look. And this is the number that we'll be focusing on mostly because this is the one that you want to align to, uh, to the, the frequency that your player makes footsteps. And from there, let's, uh, let's go color over life. And uh, we already have some things here. The color of a life, uh, constant vector curve. We have two points, which will work as a little bit like a, like a lerp. Our, uh, over the lifetime of each individual particle, it's going to go from our in value of zero to our in value of one. So we're sort of lerping between these two colors. And we'll just set them to like a nice sort of browny, dusty color. Putting our out value, we'll set these to more or less the same thing. Maybe a little less saturated the later it, uh, the later it goes. And then further down, we need the alpha over life here. So we got same as, uh, same as up above, we have an in value and an out value, our in value of one, so totally, uh, totally opaque, and our out value of zero, which is totally transparent. We, don't, we shouldn't really have to affect that. We can see it sort of fade out here in the, in the preview. Just trying to adjust here. Uh, as for some other, some other things, let's right click here in this gray space, come down to size, and get ourselves a size by life. All right, we'll select that. And here we see, similar to the others, a few more of these, uh, these options here. At the moment, they're not changing by size at all. So let's, uh, let's affect that. We'll change the out value of our zero to two. And you see now they're shrinking over time because our out value at the one point is, uh, is just one. So we'll set that up to something higher, like seven. So it's gonna kind of, kind of expand as the, as the time passes. And that's more or less all that we have to do, but there's lots that you can tweak in here, lots of different things that you can play with. Uh, for the meantime though, for the sake of this video, we'll just hit save and we'll head back to the editor. So we'll head up here to our world settings, go to our game mode, we'll find our default pawn class with a little magnifying glass to find it in the content browser and we'll open this guy up. Which will get us uh, here, this uh, familiar sort of, you know, blueprint graph for our player and we'll add ourselves a new component. This one will be a particle system. We'll just uh, leave it called particle system. Our template over here is gonna be our footstep, just like that, and we're done. Now here in the viewport, we can see it's appeared here, 
but that's not quite uh, <laughs> not quite how we want it to be. We're going to set it behind the feet a little bit, uh, just like that, fairly close to fairly close to ground level. In fact, I might jump back over here and change some things. Instead of seven, let's go like four. I don't know. These are all things that we can tweak. Okay, so we have our particles sitting here in our in our player. Let's hit up the event graph and make ourselves a new function. This will be our footstep, our footstep function. And here is where we'll we'll check to see if the player is you know actually walking around and not jumping or anything. And to do that, we'll find some of our some of our players, uh, players, you know numbers. For example, uh, get move right and get move forward. So if these two values, as we see, so if we go back to the event graph, we can have a look at what's, uh, what's going on here. Here's our movement input. So we're finding these axis values. At zero, there will be no movement, forward or right, which means that if these values are anything other than zero, then the, the player is going to be moving. So I come out of this return value here, type in a double equals, and we'll get an equal float and just uh, leave it at zero. But we'll duplicate this guy for the move right variable and then come out of this Boolean result with an and. So what's this gonna do is that the result of this uh, Boolean, this one here, is going to check both of these results and if they're both the same, it's gonna come out true. All right, so out of our footstep function here, let's just get a branch and we'll plug our and into the branch here. So far so good, and we can see how this works. Let's uh, get a couple print strings. Using print strings for debugging is very, very common. Let's leave one at hello, we'll leave false at, let's, I don't know, we'll call it dust. Hit save, and then when we jump into the, into the game here. Oh, it's not printing. Ah, we have to call the actual function. So, in our event graph, off the begin play, let's set timer by function name. And we'll call the function, whoop, that's pause timer. We want set timer, set timer by function name. The function name is going to be footstep. We'll set it to loop and we'll tell it to tick every 0.2. This function is going to act basically just as a check to see if the if the player should be generating this, this footstep particle or not. In the meantime though, we'll jump into our into our game here. And you see when we're well we can see the, the particle here. Sort of lining up fairly well with the player's footsteps. When we're standing still, we see it says hello. And when we're moving, we see it says dust. The problem with this is that at the moment, the particles are just, just there. So they're going to show up whether we're jumping, whether we're standing still and all of that. But these print strings here are showing us the functionality of this branch and these checks that we're making. So we can delete those and uh, let's drag in character movement. So after we've found out whether the player is moving or not, like actually getting the, the, the move right, move forward inputs, we need to find out if the player is jumping. First of all, let's get uh, we'll get is falling. This will just get a boolean check to see if the player is is you know falling off an edge or something. And we'll also need our jump uh, jump z velocity. So if the player has hit jump and they're moving upwards in the world off the ground, then jump z velocity is going to be greater than zero. So out of here, let's get a greater than or equal to greater than or equal to zero. And let's also come out of these booleans with an equals an equal equal. So if this, if this Boolean equals equals true, like if it is falling in other words, and if the jump Z velocity is greater than zero, in other words, if the player is jumping, then we will uh, get our second check. So let's feed these into another and, just like that. And then another branch, you can hold in B and click for a branch. We'll plug in the result of this little tree into our second branch. And then our false into this branch and that pretty much wraps up our, our code. Next, uh, let's select our particle system on the left here and make sure that it is disabled by default. Well, that's not what we want. We want uh, auto activate. So turn off auto activation. So it is deactive by default. And then drag your particle system into the graph and out of this blue uh, little uh, output node here, we'll get deactivate and activate. All right, so far so good. So if the player is moving, if it is moving around, we want our dust to be deactivated. And if the player is jumping, then we also want it to be deactive, deactivated rather. 
But if both of those results are false, then we get our dust. All right, so hit compile and then save, jump back into the editor, and there we have it. We're now producing dust with each foot, with each footstep. When we're standing still, uh, there's, there's nothing. When we jump, there's nothing. I can run and jump and they stop. Got up on here. But running around, we have, we have dust. But when we jump, no dust. And when we stand still, no dust. So that's uh, about it for functionality. We, uh, so we can, we can tweak these things. This, uh, this set timer by function name, I mean, this function is really, it's just a check. We're just checking whether the player is moving or whether the player is jumping or falling. And if, if neither of those things are true, then we get to activate our, our dust particle. And back in our particle emitter here, if we go to spawn, it's this constant here, this spawn rate, which is going to dictate how often the, the particle appears in the world. So this is the number that you want to line up with the frequency that your player is making footsteps. I hope that all makes sense. And our material here is uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to understand. Other than that, I think we're about done with this video, guys. So a special thanks to Ultimate Phoenix for making this request. I noticed that you requested twice, man. So sorry I didn't uh, didn't address this one sooner. But uh, I hope this helps you. I hope this helps. I hope this helps anyone. And I'll see you guys in the next video. One more thing before I go. If you would like to see me cover something on my channel, if you'd like to make your own requests or just uh, you know hang out, have a chat. If you've got some problems in your own project and you might might like a, another perspective, feel free to drop by my Discord where I'm lurking almost all the time. And uh, we can have a chat. We can chill out, share some memes, share some music. Have some fun. So just thought I'd remind you guys that that is the, the first place that I'll look for, uh, for, for people's feedback and, and requests and that kind of thing. So I look forward to hanging out with you guys. Catch you in the next one.